Hey guys, Richard Holden here. Welcome to the channel. The question is, how much is a camshaft worth? The answer, it depends. In this video, we're going to take a look at a cam upgrade on a small block Chevy. And actually, we're going to take a look at a cam upgrade on two small block Chevys. We want to find out how much a cam upgrade is worth on your typical 350 Chevy. But guess what? It was worth different power levels on two different motors. Now, how is it possible that the same cam upgrade is worth different power outputs on two combinations? Let's find out. It should be obvious that the factory camshaft was never designed with maximum performance in mind. Obviously, Chevrolet or Ford, Dodge, whoever, when they designed the factory camshafts, maximum power was not the design goal. They have a lot of other goals like uh, fuel mileage and emissions and longevity and all sorts of things when they're designing the factory camshaft. So not, not surprisingly, a camshaft upgrade is a good way to improve the power output of your small block Chevy, small block Ford, Dodge, whatever, Honda, it doesn't matter what it is. But on a small block Chevy, how much is a cam upgrade really worth? Well, there are two things to think about here. First of all, the first thing is what camshaft are we talking about? Going from a factory cam to some kind of performance aftermarket cam, there are good gains to be had, but it depends on what cam you put in. If you put a, if you go from a stock cam to a mild cam, it's going to be worth a little bit of power. If you go to a much wilder cam, you're going to gain even more power. But the second thing, and a lot of things, people, one thing a lot of people don't realize is that it also depends on your test motor. If you do a cam upgrade on a bone stock motor with a two barrel carburetor and stock exhaust manifolds, you might not get as much power as if you were to do the same test on a motor that was already had lots of good things going for it. It had more compression, it had more head flow, it had a good intake manifold, it had a good carburetor, and it had headers on it. You're going to get more from that camshaft. And that's exactly what we're gonna show you here. So we're gonna show you two upgrades with the same camshaft on two different motors to show you how much extra power there is from a more powerful combination to start with. So we'll start off with our mild combination. This is basically a Vortec motor. So it's a, it was originally a hydraulic roller cam, although we're testing a flat tap camshaft in this. But the good thing that it does have are the Vortec cylinder heads. Now we had taken off the fuel injection. This was a junkyard motor. We had removed the fuel injection, replaced it with a simple dual plane carburetor and intake and distributor. In this case, the dual plane high rise intake manifold came from the guys at Speedmaster. We put a 650 XP carburetor on there, a set of inch and three quarter headers and an MSD distributor. We ran it first with a stock camshaft. In fact, both of these motors were run with the same stock camshaft. This is a camshaft that we got from a local auto parts store. So it was your basic 180 to 190 horsepower um, stock truck small block Chevy camshaft. So we ran it first with that stock camshaft. Then we installed a Comp Extreme Energy 268 camshaft. And that camshaft featured a 477-480 lift split, which still worked with the um, Vortec heads. It had a 224-230 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation. So let's see what happened on our mild Vortec junkyard motor, and then we'll step up to our other combination next. So here was the combination run with the dual plane intake, 650 Holley, MSD, and headers on our otherwise stock junkyard motor with a flat tap at camshaft. We did have a spring upgrade on the Vortec heads as well. This combination produced a whopping 278 horsepower and 353 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we installed the Extreme Energy Comp Cam. You see we got good power gains. Now the power jumped up to, peak power jumped up to 343 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 381 foot-pounds. So both the peak horsepower and the peak torque improved. And more importantly for a lot of guys on this, if we take a look at, we didn't lose any low speed power. It was making about the same as the stock cam, which is still a win for a cam upgrade because the 224 cam on a small block 350 is a pretty healthy upgrade. But the nice thing is, like I said, we didn't really trade any power down low. So this was a good gain. The cam was easy to install. We did the we did the normal kind of break-in procedure that we always do on these small blocks. When we put a new camshaft in it, we put new lifters in. We already had springs in the heads. And when we did this, we ran through our break-in procedure, which is basically 25 to 30 minutes of low speed 
um, running, and then we varied the RPM and stuff to, to get the lifters and, and camshaft seat because it was a, was a flat tap at camshaft. We didn't have a whole bunch of spring rate in this, which helps keep the lifters and the camshaft alive because it is a flat tap at cam. On hydraulic roller stuff, we normally don't go to that trouble. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran this same upgrade on a slightly wilder combination with more head flow and compression stuff. And we can see if the amount of power that we gained on the wilder combination compares to this one where we had gained, uh, we had gone from 278 to 343 horsepower, which is a gain of 65 horsepower. So now let's find out what happens when we run the same test on a wilder combination. To illustrate that the same camshaft can be worth different power outputs on different combinations, we're going to run, you guessed it, the same camshaft on a different combination. This was also a 350, actually a 355, because this thing was bored 30 over. It also had forged internals. It had a cast crank, but it had forged rods and forged pistons. And more importantly than the forged piston was the fact that it had valve reliefs to allow us to run lots and lots of camshaft on this. We eventually put a big hydraulic roller camshaft in this and ran ported AFR heads and a single plane intake and lots of stuff to get the power way up there. But before we did that, we ran this simple test. And actually this test <laughs> happened by accident when I put a set of Holly aluminum system axe heads on our small block, but had the stock camshaft still in there. <laughs> and I was supposed to be upgrading the camshaft as well. But this allowed me to have a cool test, which we're telling you about now. So this combination was a forged flat top piston with valve release. We had a set of Holly 23 degree aluminum system axe heads. I don't think that they offer these heads anymore, but basically you can think of that as a good upgrade to any of the factory heads. It would This, this head would be uh, a step up from the Vortec heads that we ran on the other combination, but they would not be equal to something like a fully CNC head, like an airflow research or a trick flow head. So think of that kind of in the middle between a, a stock head and, and between an, an, an all out kind of ported CNC head. So we ran the system axe heads, this 350 also was equipped with an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap intake. And because this was run long ago, we also had a 650 Demon. This combination had a slightly smaller set of headers on it because they were chassis headers. They were inch and 5 eighths headers run with three inch collector extensions. So run in this manner with the stock camshaft. In fact, the same stock camshaft that we would run in the previous test. Our combination produced 323 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 412 foot pounds of torque. So now let's see what happened when we upgraded our camshaft. And I know up here it says 266 cam. That's just me writing it incorrectly. Um, comp doesn't even make a 266 cam. This was this was the same Extreme Energy 268 cam. It was a 477 480 lift split. 224, 230 degree duration split, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. But now we were testing it on a combination that had more compression, more head flow, slightly more displacement, and in my opinion, probably a better intake manifold. They both had 650 carburetors, so we're not worried about flow so much because the 650 is enough to support this kind of power level, even though we would later on go to a 750 on the higher power output combinations. But run with that camshaft and the Holly heads. This combination produced 419 horsepower. Peak torque was all the way up to 444 foot-pounds. So where we gained, 65 horsepower with the same cam upgrade on our milder combination. We now gained 95 horsepower from the same cam upgrade on our slightly wilder combination. We were starting with more power and we ended with more power. More importantly for this comparison is that the gain in between increased dramatically. So the camshaft wants to make power if you give it the other things, if you give it good head flow and give it a good intake manifold and obviously the displacement and compression affect that as well. So it's the camshaft and the combination you're tested on. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this example running the camshaft on two different combinations? Well, we learned the following things. First of all, a camshaft is a good upgrade for a small block Chevy or really any motor and you're going to get good power gains. Also, we learned that the gains that you get are going to depend on the actual test combination. Now, we could have taken this to the extreme by running an even milder combination and an even wilder combination. So if we were to run this same camshaft on a 
bone stock motor. In fact, the second motor that we tested it on, the modified 3, 350, we did exactly that. Now we ran this combination with a stock two barrel intake manifold, a stock two barrel carburetor, stock head, stock cam, and stock exhaust manifolds. And that thing made a whopping 229 horsepower. If we were to run this cam test on that motor, the gains would be very minimal because all the other things would limit the available power offered by the camshaft. If we go to the other extreme and run this same camshaft test on, let's say, a 383 with CNC ported airflow research or Brodux or trick flow heads with more compression, we already have more displacement and a good intake manifold, the big carburetor and big headers. If we were to run the same camshaft on that, we'd see even bigger gains. So on the extremes, we see less or more. The two middle ones, we see pretty good gains. That's what happens when you do cam upgrades on your small block. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.